What's up everybody? Welcome to another Heroes of the Storm game. And right now we're actually looking at a Hero League match that was played recently and since then we had Blizzard also publish a mini patch that we're going to talk about in a moment. But let's introduce our two teams first. To the left side we have Bijou on Zul'jin, the new hero. And we have prepared on Murden, Mords and Tychus, split second on the ATC and Dark Omicron playing the support role with the Rega. So a double tank, double backline build currently for them. Whereas the red team is relying on XD on the Tyrande, Genova on Ragnaros, we have Midibidi on Artanis and Eternal on Li Ming with Alex, the pro G on Arthurs. So this game right now is one of the first matches on the channel here on the YouTube channel where we have Zul'ji in the new hero. But as I already said a bit earlier, we had a mini patch coming into play shortly after this game was played. And one of the things that got changed was actually an increase in the cooldown on Rhaegar's Bloodlust and also a cooldown increase on Zul'ji's heroic ability Taz Dingo. Something to keep in mind, most of the other heroes haven't really been affected here, so it doesn't really matter for the match at hand. I'm of course going to try and show you guys a little bit more Zul'ji and troll play in the near future, but just for now, one game so that you have a bit of an idea how the hero is currently being played and what kinds of builds are being used. Keep in mind, this is not a tournament environment here. This is actually Hero League where a lot of the players are still trying to experiment a little bit with Zul'jin. One of the things that I also am pretty happy about is that we have Ragnaros in the game and also, of course, at the same time we are currently seeing and Arthas. We have a bit of a problem with the Artanis overlay here. I'm going to double check if that's going to be solved. Alex, on the other hand, as the red team is engaging, is in a bit of trouble. He's playing Arthas right now. Another hero that we actually do not see all that often. But let's find out how much of an impact Alex can actually have for this game. The map, as you can already tell, of course, is Battlefield of Eternity. So it's a lot about the pressure against the Immortal when we're looking at the draft, which is one of the reasons why we're seeing something like a Turanda in the setup now. Midi Bidi on the Artanis, uh, on the other hand, now has to be a bit careful. Split second, could go for the stun, does indeed do that. And here comes the kill right away. ETC himself also falling though, and now Alex is moving in, trying to make it a double. Going for Taika, slowing him down already with the Frozen Tempest, but Eternal himself is also in a lot of trouble here and gets taken down. So a two for one trade in favor of the blue team here. They're doing pretty well in the early stages of the match. We were looking at the talents that have been taken so far with our official UI up to the top. You can see them. We have now also the stacking talent taken for Muradin with a perfect storm. Good stun combo against Tykes and he goes down as well. Nice stun on Taranda who went into a different build here. Not going for the owl build which you normally see on Taranda to get the cooldown reduction mainly of course for the heals. And later on uh, with the heroic ability, that's the must. But we have in this case the Celestial Attunement actually for her. Trying to have a little bit more presence in those fights in the middle of the map. Thanks to the mana regeneration or the mana cost regeneration that we see here. When we're looking at the Immortals, of course, normally what you see with the first Immortal is just both teams trying to race. It's very, like, very rarely do you actually see a team trying to defend here. The reason for that is mainly that uh, you normally lose that in the long run if your opponent just keeps poking. At this point right now, we have actually a very close Immortal, but it is in this case the blue, t sorry, the red team that is winning the Immortal now. And in this case, they could try and push that through, of course. Especially when we're looking at a hero like um, good old Ragnaros, he's going to have a pretty big impact later on. For now we're seeing with his build a bit of a focus on Sulfuras here, and that's another talent that has actually been reduced in damage in the recent mini patch. That's really something that you have to keep in mind while we're going through the game here. But already the push happening at the bot lane. Shields are nearly zero at this point, already completely gone, and uh, therefore the Immortal shouldn't really do too much damage just yet. Up at the top lane we still have that setup with Artanis going up against Muradin right now. But at least the wall has fallen slightly in experience now for the red team. And when we're looking at the builds here we now have Suljin on the let the killing begin. So Suljin is a lot about like the auto attacks, he's a lot about the attack speed, the extra damage that he can also get with his abilities. And this is something that has been focused highly. When it comes to the rogue abilities, we very rarely see the guillotine. It's usually always Taz Dingle that is being used here. And oftentimes you will see that comboed with the Ancestral on Rhaegar. And talking Rhaegar, he's actually in a bit of trouble here. So, despite what you might think, Bloodlust not really the most common play right now when we're looking at the combo with Zul'jin. It's mostly about trying to help him out once the Taz Dingle is over. And during the duration, of course, he is invulnerable, more or less, so you can't kill him or unkillable. And therefore, a lot of healers have been comboed with him, like a Divine Palm on the Monk, on uh, uh, yeah, Karazim. But at the same time, of course, also the uh, Ancestral Healing can be quite powerful, since it's basically impossible to miss it if you just properly use it. 
Mirrodin is going for a bit of a different setup here with the uh, crowd control, not going for the mass sustain build that we usually see on him. One of the main reasons why that's happening right now is that he is a second tank. So we have ETC in the setup plus Mirrodin, so you can actually start to spec Mirrodin a little bit differently than you would normally do that. Oftentimes when we're having Mirrodin together with, let's say, a Thrall, for example, or any kind of melee assassin, then you still want to have the mass sustain build for him. But in this particular setup, it's actually completely fine going into just a little bit more damage on the hero. Dark Omicron down here on his Rhaegar, finds himself in a bit of trouble but is able to escape. Has on level 1 of course taken the Lightning Bond and if you're a Rhaegar player this is definitely the go-to talent on Battlefield of Eternity. It's just so much extra damage that you have especially against the Immortal when the objective is up that very few players will ever neglect to take that talent. It's definitely the best level 1 talent for Rhaegar on this map. Good kill also against Atanas right now. The blue team once again getting a little bit ahead and the timing couldn't be any better for them. Right now they have a lot of good shots to take to the second Immortal in the game. We're seeing Suljin by now with the Vicious Assault now taken as well. And it's really all of those e extra basic attacks that you get here. So a Grievous Assault or Grievous Throw is currently the number one go-to build for a lot of the Suljin players out there, but not by any means the only one. Great kill here on the other hand, a double kill as Alex goes for the root, locks the opponents in place, and then Ragnaros and Liming can both capitalize on it, drop the damage, and that double kill might result in them taking another Immortal here. Great move now, and really nice comeback here for them as well. It didn't really look too pretty as the objective started, but right now the red team is doing fairly well here. The full focus on Sulfuras again for Ragnaros, and Midi Bidi currently trying to get those Atana swaps in. It's actually interesting to note that especially Alex completely hates playing with an Atanas in his own team because most of the swaps that are being executed on that level are oftentimes backfiring pretty hard. So oftentimes when he starts to ban, he actually bans Atanas out. Not because he's afraid of Atanas being ban played against him, but more so because he is afraid of one of his teammates using Atanas and then not getting those swaps completely down and they are swapping into a bad position, for example. In this case, nearly swapping into the stun, but good kill against Zul'jin. That was really well done here. And of course, putting that into a 4 versus 5 again. Also ETC in trouble, but so is Ragnaros. He's currently going up against Muradin, and Muradin gets the kill, jumps in to take down Tirana too. That could be the second one right there, and it indeed turns around, but Muradin sacrifices himself for it. Is able to just get enough damage in though to make sure that Atanas also falls. Mords on the Tykers has the entire time been able to push out all the damage, especially of course with his trade. And right now this is again a really nice back and forth that we're having here. Six kills already on each side as Split Second moves in against Alex. Alex with the root and Eternal trying to help his teammate out there. Both of them, of course, playing for the Ma Damascus boys, which an, uh, which an org has now picked up for HGC 2017, which is going to start on January the 20th. Both players are now playing for Tricked Esports, and uh, that's one of the teams that we will see uh, play for the European scene there. A little bit of fighting still going on in the middle as we have the blue team picking up the Immortal, and here comes once again Bijou on his Suljin. Now, when we're talking Suljin, the one thing, of course, that most of you guys probably already know, but that I want to highlight again is the less health Zul'jin has, the faster he attacks. So um, that's actually making him extremely dangerous. And it's one of the reasons why Taz Dingo in particular is such an amazing heroic ability for him. Taz Dingo being used here right now, so he is unkillable. And of course he has an enormous attack speed then and uh, the damage output there too. Now keep in mind, I was talking a little bit earlier about how most of the time you see right now Ancestral Healing being paired off with Zul'jin if he's being played. But the focus isn't really that Bloodlust comp. In this game, on the other hand, Bloodlust has been picked up. It was played very early after Zul'jin got released. A lot of people are still experimenting a bit how to really put the hero into the best light. Ah, Bloodlust already used right over here. Mords, on the other hand, down. Has gotten some value out of the Odin, but not enough. The fort is also still alive. ETC jumps in, slides through, tries to get the kill against Eternal, but he gets away. Tazdingo active on Bijou. He gets the damage in, but isn't able to really kill anybody here. Double kill against the blue team, as we are seeing Eternal and Alex clean house here. Get the two kills, defend against the Immortal, and now also Ragnaros joining the fun here up at the top. 
So both of the teams currently with their rogue abilities, and you can already tell that with Bloodlust, currently Rhaegar is attempting to not only get some extra value for Zul'jin, but also for Tychus, and especially of course the Odin here. So those fights are going to be really important for that. One of the things that can definitely counterplay it though is the suppression pulse that we have seen now as the heroic ability on Atlantis. So that's definitely something where you have a very good blind that you can use against those auto attackers. And especially the Zul'jin is of course going to suffer a lot from it. Down here to the bottom, Alex with a nice root. XD on the other hand is currently in the cooldown on the stun, but ETC still not able to get away here. Atlantis confirming the kill going in deep for that. And we see at the same time now also Sulfuras smash taken for Ragnaros. So not going here for his Lava Wave. There's only two lanes on the map. Again, we have the ult on the side of Tyrande who did not go for the heal ult. In this case, actually Starfall being used to try to get some extra value during these fights. That's definitely a great thing for them, but one of the problems that they still have is a bit of sustain. Now, when we're talking sustain for the, re the red team, we still have to talk a little bit about heroes like, for example, Ragnaros, who of course has self-sustain himself with the Sulfuras. We're also seeing Artanis and also Arthur's two heroes that have a lot of survivability, especially Alex as he goes into the army of the dead and has then also his Q available on the heroes, so that's another thing that works in their favor. But it's still a little bit risky for them to just completely forego the heals on Tyrande's heroic and instead go for the Starfall here. But once again, Nova a little bit far out actually, and Ragnaros is paying with his life for it. Good stuns from Split Second and Prepared on EDC and Muradin. They get the kill, and that's a 5 versus 4 on level 12 now for the two of them. 10 kills versus 9 overall. The top lane is being pushed, good timing on the camp by the red team, but they are starting to lose a lot of ground on the objective itself moving down to the bottom of the map to at least obliterate that shaman camp that has been taken by the blue team Alex double checking the bush here trying to find out if there's a trap laid out for them which is not the case here and both of the teams just trying to get into position right now to fight that five versus five but the value up at the top lane is still there for the red team as we're now seeing uh, the shaman camp moving in split second on the ETC tries to defend and level 13 is now also available for the red team and that of course empowers them quite a bit going into that fight here. It's a 5 versus 4 for a little bit longer, but here comes ETC jumping into the backline. Muradin nearly down, takes his ult, uses it immediately. He's super low though, as we're having Bijou on his troll going full ham. And of course, Testingo activated the damage output, the kill against Satanis. Suljin down, Muradin also dead, but it is Ragnaros again who falls, and shortly after that, Tyrande as well. Nice move with Calamity. Eternal actually going in for the kill and gets it. The root on Alex saving Liming for now as we had the Tigers actually trying to get into range for another quick damage poke against Eternal which would definitely have ended Liming here. But at this point the two versus two on the map and Mords and Dark Omicron and Tigers and Rhaegar go for the Immortal. Eternal moving in from behind. Here comes Alex tries to go for the root and there we have it. Eternal immediately trying to capitalize on it. Alex himself is super low now though and does not have his ult available anymore. He goes down, just no chance to sustain himself against Tychus, and this Immortal is nearly taken out. 13 versus 13 right now. Double swap already used, and Suppression Pulse and the kill! Great play there! Really cheeky play by Mini Bitty, and able to get the double kill. Well done, but the Immortal is still gonna fall, or is it? Prepared is going deep for the objective, but he will probably die for it. Split second is trying to help him out here, yeah, not really a whole lot that he can do, but that's the kill against Muradin right now. Talking about the talents for just another second, as we are seeing on level 30, now Voodoo Shuffle being picked up. So really afraid of all of these roots that we currently have. The stuns that we see with not only Tyrande, but also of course Arthur's are definitely a bit of a problem. And that's one of the things that Bijou was apparently really afraid of. Pressure at the bot lane right now with the Immortal itself, but since there are still a few heroes dead, the rest of the blue team decided to move to the top and get some value there, take some of the structures down, get some extra experience. And as we've already been talking about a bit earlier here today, we have seen a bit of a different approach in the build on the side of Muradin as he wants to go for a bit more damage since they're running double tank here. So we are seeing now on level 13 still the healing static, but we have still the Iron Forge momentum and the crowd control. So not really going for that double clap that you would normally go for if you go for the mass sustain on the hero, but still relying at least on the healing static for these fights since we have a lot of battles happening currently in the middle of the map. 
Also at the same time now, we're seeing Rega going straight into the shield, the extra shield on 13. Once again, Midi Bidi in trouble, gets the suppression pulse down, but he himself dies. Alex currently with the Frozen Tempest trying to slow the onslaught down a little bit. Bloodlust has already been activated and they're able to escape at least for now as Alex turns around with Howling Blast and tries to lock down Zul'jin. The cleanse is there though and the blue team is able to retreat once again. That quick kill against Artana is definitely pressuring the red team heavily in this setup now. When we're looking at especially the damage output that we have so far, you can also tell that, f at least for now, we're seeing still Tigers with the main damage, 41,000 for his team. Suljin with four deaths so far in the game, still looking strong, regenerating a few hit points here, as you can see to the left. And we have also, of course, carrying quite hard when it comes to the damage. Eternal on his leaving, dropping the hammer. At the same time now, once again, Ragnaros isolated. Good jump by ETC and the kill even with the star for the oh boy a triple oh alex with a great route and then we have our tennis going in for the double swap once again with a level seven talent he also has the extra slow so that really helps once again the kill against hikers that calamity really working out in this game for eternal on level 13 here we have of course that double swap so when it comes to Atanas, the build definitely not really what we're usually seeing on the hero but it's working out for them so far going for a little bit more utility than anything else and it's really just paying off in those few situations where we've seen it at the same time now though, once again, Trail of Frost being used by Alex, trying to re heavily rely on these roots and the Remorseless Winter as well. So if you time it properly with your own uh, Howling Blast, then you can just really completely lock a target down for an eternity. So uh, that's definitely going to be a problem for any hero on the blue team that gets caught by it. But right now, Alex just like trying to delay that a bit. They are racing the Immortal and they are going to get this one for sure. They had to defend against two already, but this is theirs. So they are trying to get some damage out of it. Same time now, we have given the axe taken by Muradin for the extra damage. Could have actually seen him go even for the Skullcracker on the level 7 talent if he wanted to go into the auto attack damage. Alex is currently going straight for Muradin, and that kill, that's the double swap again. Starfall is on the ground, Eternal with the Calamity once again confirming a kill. Tychus is dead, so is Muradin. They're jumping in against the troll now too. Zul'jin goes down, even the Taz Dingo couldn't save him here. And this is one of the th reasons why we oftentimes see a healer paired with Zul'jin that is able to burst heal him quite heavily. So Ancestral Healing is something that since then has actually been played a lot with him. Of course, he can still get a lot of value out of the Bloodlust, but the sustain is something that is a bit of a problem here for the blue team, at least up to this point. Right now, we're seeing in terms of kills, 15 against 23 already. Once again, Atanas with the attempt for a swap here. 16 versus 18, so a solid leading experience also for the red team as they are trying to even go for core here. Suljin is down for another two seconds, but Odin is already being popped. And here comes Ragnaros with the trade going in, trying to get those done in stuns and end the damage as well. Alex is going very deep here, trying to defend with the Immortal, but already going straight for the core. The defense is still on, ETC is down, it's a 5 versus 4. This looks like game as the red team turns it around and finishes the game off here. GG, well played. And this another game played, of course, in Hero League. So keep that in mind. First Suljin game that we have. And of course, a little bit of Ragnaros action as well. With Eternal ending up picking up the MVP of the game. Good damage by him. Only one death. And especially with his positioning here. Getting not only the kills in with a poke from a distance, but also the Calamity. Alex had a bit of time to finally get some Arthur's play in again. 55 seconds root time here for him. So... Pretty fun game on Battlefield of Eternity. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And we're, of course, going to bring you some more coverage of uh, high-level play pretty soon, but also more and more tournament matches as the seasons are picking up again. So see you guys next time. Thank you very much for tuning in. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you enjoy today's game.